Hello lords and ladies, Private Yorkie here, back from the front. It's crazy out there. We're going to get crazy in here too, because we're heading to the South Pole with virtually no food left and virtually no uh, fuel left. Oh dear, that's not good, is it? Alright, so, see what we have here. Going around there, anything in here? Oh, that's my, that's my room. Isn't it? Go downstairs and see if there's anyone there. Nope. The boiler room, no one in there. Or the engine room. Pantry. Oh, it's finally saved the poultry. Right, what's this? Week three. Right count island. The last known location of the Viscount, your destination. Right, back in we go. Go talk to the captain. See what he wants. The captain not appears to be absent. His chair is occupied. Let's get started. Oh. That won't sound good. What happened? What in the... Well, I was worried about this. Look at that ice, we could be trapped here for a while. Strong presses if we didn't have enough to bother. Well, no mucking around. Let's get to work. Where's Hunt? I'll grab him. I'm sorry, he felt it too. Sure. Check the boiler room. I'm sure the mole man has problems with his own. Not to worry, everyone. We'll be free and move in again before you know it. Back to work. Alright, down to the boiler. Oh, and on there's some money. Officer Shaw, what happened? Did to come to a stop? I almost... Uh, flung my camera into the wall. Yeah, don't do that, it'll break. Didn't hit anything, did you? Did we? Have you seen Hunt? Not since this morning. He was going to speak with Grimley about the lifeboats last I heard. Alright. Check my room. Nothing. Go downstairs. Uh, and down to the boiler room. It's stuck then. You're looking for Hunt, you just missed him. Ah, oh, we didn't cross paths. Don't ask me. I'm going to check out with my brother. Coal. One sack of coal. With a sack full of big eggs. Okay. And out we go. Mr. Hammond, if I'd made errors any, I'd tell you. It's secure, don't you worry. They know this. Am I interrupting? Not any more than he's interrupting my work. I'm ensuring that the boiler was not damaged in the sudden commotion. I told you if it was, they'd already know. I'm not in the business of making mistakes. I know that if the furnace goes, we go down with it. Yes, but you're only one man with just a pair of engineers at the distance. Just looking at the number of valves, this seems far too much for you to handle. Maybe a bloody benefactor should have considered that. I've got used to it by now. It will hold, trust me. I will... well... We'll have to wonder. Don't fancy staying on the ship any longer than necessary. Compared to we break from the, from the ice as quick as possible. Come and die to a grimace on his face. First mate here. Where's the one who got us into this bloody mess? It's a difficult one to find. Indeed he is. I have a suspicion to where he may be now. We're on the ship, an unmoving one of that. A man cannot simply disappear. If he's anywhere, he must be in his cabin. When you find the man, come on. Give him a knee up on my behalf. I can't do it myself, but too busy to, uh, keeping us alive. Then he gives a nod. I believe you and I both are our good captain of the shore. But you should call the crew uh, for dinner first. Routine is important, especially now. Not before we've had the furnace, mind grabbing that I've done that already. Hmm. Feed the furnace. Alright, that'll get us through on half. We're not breathing, so that's fine. And we'll leave there. Upstairs. 
You remind me to take the plan ready for myself for dinner, despite the ice. One thing nervous uh, others as if nothing had changed at all. All the crew for dinner. The crew have their meal. The dinner is shared. The crew return to their pulse. The hammocks are unfurled and preparated for the evening. You can't help but notice it's still bright light outside. What we got here? You didn't see him either. He didn't shut the pathway, but the cabin door was locked when I checked. Slippery bastard. What are you thinking, Hunt? Alright. Anyone down here anywhere? No. What's this? Upstairs. No sign of Hunt, I take it. Mitchell Templeton passed by, but wasn't exactly willing to ask to take questions. Alright, nothing else up there, so let's go upstairs. Keep it up, lads, says Kurt. We'll set ourselves right in no time. Ah, sure. I just saw Templeton entering the captain's cabin. Seems Hunt's holding himself up inside. Maybe if he had a word with our good captain, he'd be willing to lend a hand. Well, if we can, we will. Let's see what's going on. There he is. Nope, that's Templeton. Hmm, I was informed that he was here. Where could he have got himself? Maybe he's gone overboard? Templeton glares at you. This is not the time to make any jokes, so I'm not! Ah, oh! Oh god, he's drunk. The captain's laugh rings out from behind the door. The captain watches his boat, sees his head swaying as he chuckles to himself. You are a surprisingly difficult man to get hold of, Hunt. Mr. Templeton. Seeing that this is your ship... Ah, says Hunt, I know it well. Hunt's eyes turn to you. I believe you two are already acquainted. How long have you been drinking? asked Templeton. I don't know, suppose you care to join, says Hunt. Templeton frowns. Hunt shakes his hip frask as he holds it out to you, whiskey, sloshing and spilling from the top. And what are you sure? I can't tempt you with some sweet nectar. Uh, and don't drink. And you don't care to owe you, mummy, this once? No. Ah, well, you're lost. You intend to offer drinks at a time like this, said Templeton. This ship, your ship, is trapped in the ice. It's my ship now, is it? said Hunt. Some frowns. And what do you expect me to do? Get this shovels out? What do you mean this isn't your ship? Bought at an auction? Not by myself? I imagine that, says Hunt. Captain of a private vessel and I don't even own it. Pathetic. Mr Hunt, says Templeton. Captain, says Hunt. If you are not fit to stand, then you should retire for the night, says Templeton. Sure, we'll stand in your stead and we can continue in the morning. And abandon my duty, says Hunt. I think you already have, mate. No captain would uh, uh, would do that. He's a pit captain, wouldn't you agree? Well, says Templeton. Not you. Sure, isn't that right? What do you think makes for a good leader? Says Hunt. Being able to do the uh, sobriety for a start. Hunt, you know, he sticks at his drink. But I'm serious, sir. Are you what makes a good leader? We don't have time for it, says Templeton. In a word, then, says Hunt. What makes a good leader? Control. Control, says Hunt. I explain. all appearances. They need a leader. You need to convince them you're worth following. Ah, uh, what do you... How do you do that exactly, says Hunt? There's only so far a puffed out chest and booming voice can get you. No person's life has ever been saved by a scarecrow. They can scarcely protect corn. Speaking in platitudes will do you no good. A good leader is something more than a single rule you were told to follow. When you see one, you just... No. You have wasted enough time pining philosoph uh, philosophical, says Templeton. Oh, my apologies, says Hunt. I'll ask the real questions. Sure, look at where we are. You honestly think we're going to survive this? I have no doubt we will. Well, I suppose someone has to carry bait with them. The captain laughs. Sure. 
No opening doors with Alice here. That doesn't leave this room, says Templeton. That's really not good. Oh no, I wouldn't want to upset your employer, says Hunt. Our benefactor, says Templeton. I'm not changing much of a benefactor if no one knows we're here. We all want to be paid for this, don't we? Says Hunt. Enough, says Templeton. If you weren't fit to lead this expedition, you should not have agreed to it. You... You shouldn't be... No, we really should be says Hunt. All Kurt paid handsomely to join. You're just a botanist sent to keep an eye on me. I've got the chest. And then, there's me. What of you? Hunt laughs to himself, his head dropping low. Templeton opens the door. The captain needs his rest. We'll discuss this once he's of sound mind. Let him speak, Templeton. I wish you no more. It's all right, Robin. Go on now, sure. I'll be all right here. The captain appeared to have fallen asleep. Not good. Captain Hunt needs his sleep, says Templeton. But here, the pressure of command have greatly affected him. So find some rest yourself. The crew of their commands. Clear your head. We will continue in the morn. Open to Paul. Look at Tim. Okay, Tim. One would think Hunt would be taking action at a time like this, says Cordell. Instead, the man has squiddled himself within his office. An odd one. Yeah, well, odd isn't the word I'd use. Stupid is the word I'd use. All right. I was sent to the top deck. No, nope. there we go. Week three, night. You awake into a room awash with green. Minus 13 available crew. Oh dear. There's a loud banging on your door and a familiar voice speaks from behind the wood. So, are you in there? So, Hammond, what's going on? Why is everything green? Never mind the green. The boiler's in serious trouble. Pumps need manned and we need to stop the whole system overheating. I don't need to tell you to turn the scores we go. Where is Hunt? Is he aware? Can't find him. I need someone to authority to take action. Now bloody give it to me. Lead the way, Hammond. Right, let's move. We need to find the captain now. Cassia rushes up, holding her camera uh, tight as the ship rumbles. What's happening? Are we going under? Not if we can help it out of the way. It's safe to go up top, right? That Aurora, it's a shot I can't miss. I should set the fact the boss uh, snapping a photograph of the ensuing chaos. Oops, there you go. The lights of the Aurora flicker over the pale ice. Let's go to the captain's cabin. Templeton's here. Nothing, says Templeton. Visibly perturbed, he takes a moment to compose himself. Even the tub is empty, he says. Why would you expect him to be in the tub, says Hammond? Not important. This doesn't make sense, says Templeton. The man seemed barely fit to crawl himself into bed earlier. What? says Hammond. Templeton frowns. Hammond turns to you. Alright, sure. Captain's missing. You're in charge. Good to hear. I'll get a big head about it. Yes, indeed. The crew are no doubt waking at this moment. No doubt scared, confused. Your duty to keep them calm, to maintain order. I'm in glad at Templeton. It's your job to get down to the boiler room now. Already wasting enough time looking for that bastard hunt. If you storm down to that room, all you'll be doing is inciting a panic, says Templeton. We need to calm the fears of the crew and maintain an air of focus. Why the major ship goes down? Not at all. Instead, to assure them we know how to remedy this matter. You do know how to remedy this matter, Mr. Hammond, says Templeton. Aye, says Hammond. We need to be quick. I don't have time to worry about some stupid sailor's feelings. Got the bloody ship to save. Well, it's as you said, says Templeton. Obviously, is in charge. The decision is yours. 
if the crew's waking up, I can take charge and send some down there to help him. Well, that might be too much of a delay. On the other hand, if we go down there, the crew could be panicking and lose morale. Or the core of But losing the boiler would be a death trap. Uh, well, let's go down and solve the boiler. I'm gonna drive the cat list in more time. Boiler won't work. Fine. Won't wait for us, rather. I'll keep the crew at bay then, says Templeton. Come on, don't worry about him. Let's go. Or does the crew notice you and Hammond standing below the whispers begin? Yeah, that's minus 15 decorum. Soon the crew pick up the pace, walking directionless with hooded footsteps. Earth approaches. Boiler trouble, I take it. That'll lend a hand. Not when you're walking with that cane, you're not, says Hammond. I have enough strength to... Go tell the crew to hit the lower decks as many as possible, says Hammond. Let's go ashore. That can save this blasted ship. Below deck to go, bend the ladder, or down, down to the point. And you can see the brothers trying to open the door to the hold. Trying to get in, same, door's stuck. Who well, are the bastards? We need to get in there, says Hammond. We need to keep the furnace alive. Metal door unstick. Grimly looked here before darting off into the dark. Where's that bloody idiot running off, said Hammond. It'll sound the alarm. Bloody hells, let's get moving. In we go. Into the boiler room. We've got an available crew. As you enter, Hammond's engineering team are hard at work. The larger of the two engineers, Luther's grip on their valve. The speed begins to shoot out, causing Hammond to dash forward. What's it? And the back of the engineer to the valve, saving him from a nasty steam burn. Made it just in time. What's the word, Chief? says Rick. Keep those valves pumping, says Hammond. We need to avoid a war for the hammer, or we won't be making it off the ship. Go! So, the rest of the crew aren't here. Grab a valve and start turning. No problem. Grab a valve and begin turning, trying all you can to keep the water at bay. Boom! You feel the ache in your muscles as you continue to push the valve, keeping the pressure at bay. At least it's working so far. That's 10 fuel, minus 10 fuel. Oh, oh, lots of fuel. Furnace rumbles and sputters, hemorrhaging fuel. Keep turning, doing the best you can to keep the pressure at bay. We could be at this for hours, says Hammond. Shit, where's the rest of the crew? We're getting down here. Brought help, plus four crew. We have no fuel left. The furnace rumbles and sputters. Get me coal and turn those valves. Let's go get in full.
All right, what do we do then? Can't do anything there. Can't even go upstairs. Got no more of that. I see. Confirm that one. You can work hard, lad. Get in there. They grab the valve. The enough hands working on the boiler, you begin to fight back the potential wall armor. Someone's going to have to hold the furnace in place. Get in there, cavity. Room shakes. Walter Hammer! I get steam. Good fight they ride in agony. When a tailor, uh, when a crew gains a severe stat spec such as wounded scurvy or frostbite, not becoming valid and unavailable, unable to work. Keep up the work shifting the valves until the boiler is fully calm. Chip is safe. Have the crew give assistance to the wounded teddy then you feel your muscles tense. Again the decor and back plus a bit more. You fall back. Collapsing from exhaustion. As you lay back, all you can hear are a pair of pants voices. Where the hell is Captain Hunt? He's gone. Well, we can't do... We, we can do two on you will. We can't do two on that, so... Temperance is saved from sinking. The aurora passes, leaving only the bright light... Uh, the bright light and white. Week four, one week at Temperance Camp. Saved, okay. Plus 12 crew. This is where we'll pick it up next time. I'm planning to do one week per episode. So that might mean some are really short, some are really long, I don't know, but we'll see. We're alone in the captain's cabin. Out across the deck can be heard the commotion of the crew. Word has spread quickly that Captain Hunt is missing. And that is where we will end it for now, as I said. Oh! Join me out on the ice next time! I've been Private Yorkie, I'm heading back to the front, it's crazy out there. But not as crazy as here. Bye now.